Hello Flasstube, this is Kate from Kate's Crafting Corner and I am here with my January preview and my end of December wrap up. Um, I hope you've all had a Happy New Year, a Merry Christmas. I had a great time. Um, really low key, I just stayed up here um, and spent some time with my boyfriend. I didn't, um, on next weekend I'm going down to where my sister lives, and we're going to do Christmas then over the Martin Luther King weekend. Um, part of the reason is that it's it's about a three-hour drive, and I had work the next day after uh, after Christmas, and so we just figured it would be a lot easier on everyone if we could have a long weekend to celebrate, um, and I wouldn't have to worry about driving up, like leaving halfway through the day to drive up so I get enough sleep um, before going to work. So, so yeah. Um, so next weekend I'm doing Christmas with my sister, my grandfather, and my aunt. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I'm really glad I had a relaxing, easy Christmas and New Year's up here. So I want to start out with, I've had two finishes since I spoke to you guys last. The first one, you might recall, um, I believe I mentioned that I was trying to do a Prairie School Santa for my boyfriend and I did not know if I was going to finish it in time. Well, a Christmas miracle occurred and I did. And this is that Prairie Schooler Santa. I put the date right here, 2017, because I intend on making one of these for him for every Christmas. I backed it with some fabric I had in my stash that matches this red really well. So I was really happy about that. Um, you can't see it in the video a lot, but this is this, um, it's called Stardust 14 Count Ada, and there's a gold metallic thread in there. And so it sparkles and shimmers really nicely, and you can pick up some of it in the Santa and the stitching, which I think just elevates it to a whole other level. And um, so I'm really happy about this. I didn't turn it into an ornament because it's kind of big because I did stitch it on 14 count. Um, I mean, like, this is it up against my head. So, <laughs> um, so what I think we're just going to do is just, like, have them out and displayed. Oh, and look at that. I hand stitched that myself. And I'm really proud of how, like, even and nice looking it is. The rest I did on the sewing machine. But I had to stuff it. <laughs> so, this was my last finish from 2017. And then, on the 4th, I believe, I had my first finish of 2018. And I fin finished winter. Um, this is from Country Cottage Needleworks. And, um, I think, well, I can't even, I'm not even positive about what the fabric is. I just, um, maybe that, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's an even weave. It's Jobelin. It's really nice to work with. And there it is. It didn't take me that long to do. And I wanted it for my chalkboard. So that I can put it up here. So now you guys can see what my plan was with the chalkboard. I have the winter ones and my winter goals. So these ones will go on for three months. Then I have January down here. And these are January cross stitch goals. And then these are January non cross stitch but also crafting related. They're, um, they're either crochet goals or they're quilting goals. So, that was my vision with the chalkboard, and I'm really happy with it. I, I like how it looks. I like it. So, um, I did use those magnets that you can get at Hobby Lobby. So, the black ones that people think stain things. Probably, but I don't really care that much. Um, I'm not intending on putting it on fabric, just on the chalkboard. So, it is what it is. Um, they were small projects, so if they get messed up, I'm not too worried. Um, anyways, so then let's talk about the other whips that I've been working on. 
um, since I last spoke to you guys. There's this group on Facebook called 100 Days of Cross Stitch. And for that, I have uh, two projects that I'm keeping track of. You take a daily picture. The first project I'm calling um, just smalls. I can keep them in my purse and work on them. That was the first one that I finished for that. And uh, we'll get on. I'll talk about, oh, well, it's right here. This, the next one that I'm working on for that is with the Hometown Holidays series. And it is um, the town church. You might recall I have a goal to finish one of these a month. And here is my small start on that. So if you want to look at the big picture and see what it is, it's um, the roof over here on this building and part of the, the roof on the nativity and then this snowflake. Working on these smaller, this is a four inch hoop, has really helped with um, the carpal tunnel and the pain in my wrist because it's so much lighter than the Q-snaps were. And so it's going a lot better. Okay, so that's the first project I'm doing for the um, 100 Days of Cross Stitch. The next one that I'm doing is called His Hands. It's a Jamlin. And if you've watched my videos for any amount of time, you know that somewhere around July, June or July, I said that I wanted to work on this one while I was listening to scriptures every day, and that lasted probably three or four days. And I feel really bad about that. Um, but one of my New Year's resolutions is I want to get through the... Um, I want to read through the scriptures in this year and so I decided to work on this while listening to them. I have a reading plan that tells me exactly what I need to read on which day and um, the other thing you might recall is that I want to do this project for my father. He's a missionary. Um, they've been missionaries for 18 years now. Yeah, we moved to West Africa in January 2000, right after Christmas, and um, so 18 years. And so I want to do this for his office because I do a lot of projects for my parents, but they're mainly more on things that I think my mom would like. Well, I know my dad would like that Serengeti one too. Um, but oftentimes when I see something like a, a nativity, and I think about my mom because my mom collects some nativities and stuff like that. But I really thought this would be nice for my dad and for his office. Anyways, so I, except for today, I haven't done it yet today and I'll do that while um, this video is uploading. But I have been working on this while listening to the scriptures. I'm up through Genesis 24. And anyways, so, um... This part wasn't filled in before, now it is. And down here, this is all new. So from this lighter gray color. This kit does have some blended threads. And um, a lot of it is kind of this backgroundy colors. But I also love how that looks. So, um, so I'm really happy with that. And I'm really hoping that I'll be able to finish this project this year. And I'd love to give it to my dad. Because, um, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of all that he does. And um, I, I just think this is perfect for him. So, I don't think he watches these videos. So, he won't. So, this will still be a surprise. But I know other people in my family watch. So, don't tell dad. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> the final project that I've worked on is the class schedule by Armada Designs. Um, I In the last video, I still had some of those frames to finish. So I finished those before January 1st, and I have since finished that first block. So here it is. Um, we, we were told not to do that last one, or, well, actually, it's the 10th one. 
But okay, so this is transfiguration. And that is supposed to be um, when they're turning rats into goblets. That's Ron's. He didn't turn it all the way into a goblet. Still has the tail. And that's supposed to be McGonagall. Now, personally, I think that cat looks a little too friendly for McGonagall. I mean, she's rather, she's rather severe type of woman. I mean, I admire her. She's fair. Um, she doesn't show a lot of bias, but she's not a cute little kitty cat. <laughs> and this looks like a cute little kitty. So, I'm still happy with how it looks. And I'm loving this. And that, I, I did that block in just two nights. And, I mean, if I had had more time, I could have finished it in one. But, I am storing this one in my witch's hat project envelope because the Harry Potter and magic and magic school and hats, witch's hats, I mean, those are fancier than I'm sure they were allowed to wear at school, but I love it. And I think it's perfect for this project. So, there is that. Now, you might recall my, um, my crazy scheduled plans, and here's, I, I'm still bullet journaling. This is just for cross-stitch only, this calendar. And Okay, so the first four days of the month were assigned to class schedule. So I didn't get to work on it on the first, but I worked on it on the second and the third, and then it was finished. So uh, on the fourth, I spent some time just, like, kidding up a project. I didn't cross-stitch um, at home or in the evening or whatever. But, um, okay, so now the fifth through the 6th, no, the 5th through the 8th is supposed to be my Year of Whips project. At first, I, I thought I was going to work on Serengeti Mandala for my parents, and I might pull that out. The, the weather forecast for this weekend was completely rainy, but it's not raining, like, right now at all, and it's kind of clear skies. And so I changed it from Serengeti because it's stitched on black fabric, and I didn't want to do that with overcast weather. Um, but now it's not overcast, so I don't know. But, so, the project that I pulled out to work on is to have and to hold. And this is one that should have been finished a while ago for my sister who got married in 2015. So, it should have been finished in 2015. This is where I'm at. So I finished the whole bottom and now I just have the top portion. And I would love to finish this and get it to her um, as quickly as possible. Hopefully before then, which is their anniversary. So, um, so I'm thinking this is what I'm going to work on for the next few days. And I have it all in this photo box, so there is a Q-snap in here, and it's probably going to go away. A, co a working copy of the pattern, and then all the called-for threads, and um, a pair of scissors with this lovely fob that a lady at my office made for me. So I thought that was really nice. Anyways. So, I might work on that while this is uploading. Um, so either that, I can't work on the Serengeti while this is uploading because the file is a digital file. So, there's that. Okay, so, from the 9th to the 12th is my full coverage project. And my goal is to get 500 stitches on Woodland Enchantress is what that will look like and I'm hoping it won't take me five days I mean four days to get 500 stitches in on that and then I could hopefully work on 
one of the seasonal projects for the Full Coverage Fanatics. This is where I'm at on this. I, ideally, I'd like to finish this column, and that's um, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's about 600, 650 stitches, but a lot of those are half stitches, so... Um, so in the end, it should probably add up to right around 500. Um, I'm going to show you guys the project envelopes I want to sew up for the main pro my main projects as I'm going along. And there's, I want to... I want to sew up seven this month, so I'll show you as I get to them. The next, um, after, after the full coverage from the 13th to the 16th is my Year of Whips focus piece, and at the moment it is the green conversion of red from Mirabilia what she looks like in red but I'm doing her in green it's Kelly Dunn the evergreen stitchers conversion if you want to look it up it's beautiful okay so this is where I'm at on her I haven't worked on her in months so I'm really excited to get back to her maybe I should back stitch the face I don't know. Um, and this is one that I do want to do a project envelope for. And this is the one that I picked. Because it's gray and green. This is the inside. Um, you know, there is not a lot of great green fabric out there. When you go to Joann's and stuff. I never really find really pretty green fabrics, so that's kind of disappointing to tell you the truth. Okay, put that back in there. After that, from the 17th to the 20th, is my time dedicated to um, the Jane Austen the Jane Austen stitch along and I had thought that I had my plan set for this one and then something happened that something that happened is that Barbie from Petal Pushers released a Sense and Sensibility um, sampler and it's gorgeous I'm going to show you the black and white of what it looks like but you should look it up in color it's phenomenal and this is it. And she was talking about it briefly in her video yesterday. And she was talking about how these flowers over here are supposed to be like hothouse flowers with Colonel Brandon down here. And these are supposed to be more like wild flowers with Willoughby down here. And I hadn't even noticed that. And that's so well thought out and just... If you've watched Sense and Sensibility, you know Colonel Brandon brings Mary, Marianne um, hothouse flowers when she's injured, but Willoughby comes in with the wild flowers that he picked on the way to come visit her. And, um, yeah. I just think this is beautiful. Like, what she's stitched so far is really nice. And, um... So yeah, I'm probably going to do that, and I'll do that on some Vintage Country Mocha, 28 count. Um, but if you recall, which, I mean, it's no big deal if you don't recall because there's so many videos out there. I had planned on doing this West Wind design sense and sensibility one 
and I went through my stash and I found this very muted yellow fabric. You can tell there's a very slight modeling in there. It's from Fiberlicious. Um, I was in her Fabrics of the Month for a few months, not many months before I had to quit. Um, if I were to go to back to a Fabric of the Month, hers is probably what I would do. I loved her fabrics and her prices were very reasonable. And um, so if you're looking for Fabric of the Month Club, I really do recommend Fiberlicious. But I thought this would look nice with those purple flowers on the yellow. And so what I'm thinking is that the two Pride and Prejudice ones I had planned for that were also from Petal Pushers, I might push onto one month instead of two. And so I might do this West Winds one, start that next month. So that's what I'm thinking about right now. Because I really, like, I'm tempted to start this right now as opposed to wait, waiting. But I'm trying to skip, stick to the rotation at least one month of it before I totally abandon the plan. Jeez. Okay, so after the Jane Austen is full coverage by the numbers. And that is a goal to get 1,200 stitches in one month on a project. And the project I chose for that is my Christmas Carol from Heaven and Earth Designs. This is where I'm at on that. I'm doing it extreme cross country. I'm working on the 310 right now. And this is on a 22 count um, hard hanger. I gritted that myself. It took forever. And I'm not too happy with my project bag selection here, but it was the best Christmas option I had at the time. So this is what I went with. I mean, I think it's cute, but I don't think it suits the project. So when I get a better Christmas design one, I'll probably change that. Um, after that, I from the 25th to the 28th is whim stitching, so whatever calls to me. And then from the 29th to the 31st is cleaning up the sow, so any any of the like smalls that I didn't finish that I wanted to or um, theoretically if I hadn't finished the Harry Potter one I could put that in there but um, so I don't have any projects planned for then then because it's all whim stitching so I want to go over briefly the seasonal the seasonal goals that I still have so the first one is the Full Coverage Fanatics um, winter, winter one. And for that, I'm going to be doing Silent Night Lane. I want to get 2,000 stitches in on this one. And I have some 16 count pre-gridded fabric. And I already went and found, oh, over here, I marked a blue dot, that's where I should start. And so on the 4th, when I'd already finished the, um, the class schedule, what I was doing is I was trying to make up, I was kidding this one up, that's what I was doing. And I thought for this, okay, we talked about me being lazy and not wanting to get up to get new colors. So I thought that if I put a length of each of the called for colors on these low ren cards, there's five of them here, then I'd only have to get up once I ran out of a length altogether. And so this might help me work on some of my full coverage pieces that I get too lazy because of the color changes. However, it takes a long time to cut out and tape all of the, you can see I did it with the symbol and then the, to the DMC color. And um, there's 10 colors I still have to find because uh, they weren't in my master set, which means there's a project that's stolen them. Luckily, I have my cross-stitching journal that will tell me what project has them. So um, after this, I plan on quickly trying to find those. 
for the project bag that I'm going to sew up for this one, I am super excited about it. It is possibly my most favorite project bag. And that is this one. I love it. I think it suits this project perfectly. The colors, the like snowmen, and just... I think it really suits this project and I'm so excited. I might actually spend some of today sewing up these project bags. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I've also thought maybe I'm going to cut up quilt pieces. I don't know. So that is the Silent Night one. Then for the Elemental one in the full coverage project. I just I did decide not to do the new start of celestial uh it, the one with the dragons and the three celestial anyways I don't want a good fabric and um I really wanted to fit up in the rooftop for that one so that's basically what I just decided to do. So it's 1,500 stitches on up on the rooftop. I do not have the cover art page with me. I'm sorry about that. This is all that I've done on it. This fabric is so stiff. Um, and this is the project bag I'm going to do for this one. Does it suit it perfectly? No, but until I have some more Christmas related ones that'll be more fitting, um, that's just what we're gonna go with. I do, the reason why I say that is because uh, for Christmas, my boyfriend gave me a $100 Joanne gift card. And so I went into Joanne's and I got more of the fusible fleece and I got a lot of Christmas fabric um, in cuts that are big enough to make bags. And uh, so I'm going to have a lot more Christmas related bags and um, there, so there will be some better matches probably and maybe I can talk myself into giving some away. I don't know. I don't know. You know I got emotional about that the last time I contemplated something so crazy. <laughs> okay, then, not for any stitching group, but just for my uh, myself, um, I would like to get about 2,000 stitches on my Celtic, winter Celtic lady. Now, this one is a major conversion that's happening, so, um... There's some whisper threads. Oh, geez. Okay, where's the other one I'm looking for? Sorry about this, guys. Okay. So, the conversion I found and that I'm doing, and I don't remember who did this conversion. I'd love to give that person credit, but I just don't remember, and I'm so sorry about that. But anyways, this person's conversion <sighs> took the dress of Celtic Autumn converted it into blues, but you're using the head and the border of Celtic winter. And I do agree with the person's reason, which is why I decided to do that, is that this lady's dress is, is way different than the other ladies. And so, um, there's that. But so, I, in my bag, I do have both of those patterns. I, so, I have two copies of the uh, Celtic Autumn because I have one that's with my Celtic Autumn lady. Anyway, so I want to do 2,000 stitches on this. This is just part of the dress. Um, I think over here, it's like over in here. Yeah. Um... And that's actually a dark blue. It's not black. But, um, did I do what I normally do over here? Yeah. Okay, so let me just show you one of the things I do 
um, trying to hide the pattern here because I'm going to show you part of the pattern. Okay, I think my hand will hide most of it. Yeah, okay. I actually go, no, don't look over there. I actually go onto the pattern and I use a whiteout and I write what I'm changing it to so that I'm not having to try to keep um, a paper that's doing and then I directly highlight onto this because um, trying to get these large pieces of paper okay here's the back of it unfolded you can see how massive this is and trying to wrangle this into a copy machine is not being so successful lately for me and by lately I mean ever I've never been able to successfully do it uh, over here I wrote a note for myself Celtic winter conversion hands face hair and border using winter pattern so yeah that's what it is but um I love these kelp ooh sorry about that I love these Celtic ladies. I just hate messing with this paper. So, okay, so yeah. I want to do 2,000 stitches on that before we are into the spring. When I will bring out the spring lady to do 2,000 stitches on her. Um, there's no particular reasoning for this fabric. Um, project bag choice. I just really like that one and um it's just a blue inside but i really like it and the final seasonal project that i want to work on will be a new start um and it is from my five seasons of quilts it's from hershner's and it's um ursula michael is the designer and so this is the winter one. I would like to get 2,000 stitches in on it. I haven't started it, so there's nothing to show you. And this is the project bag I chose. What's the inside? That. And I chose it because it kind of reminds me of quilts, like with the blocks. And I'm actually going to put all of the seasons into here since I, I have been keeping them all together. That's a little bit of the spring one right there. So I've been having them that, and they're all in this book. So um, that's my plan with this project bag. Um, the last bit that I want to show you and talk about is... Um, Okay, I want to show you my purse that my boyfriend gave me for Christmas. And let me tell you why. This purse is perfect for me. And um, he said he spent a lot of time looking for a purse. And he wasn't, I don't know if he wasn't sure that it was a good one. But it's perfect for me. And let me show you why. There are tons of zippers, which means I can store different things in different places. Like over here, I can store my Kindle. Over here, I have some tea bags because I don't know I'm a weirdo um over here I can put my keys for easy access but this is the main reason why it's perfect over here is the perfect pocket for my bullet journal it fits right in there and the pins I use are right in there over here is perfect space for my wallet and also um, I put my glasses case in there and my phone this middle section that's ibuprofen. I do keep that in there. Um, a random shopping bag. It's perfect for storing a small cross stitch. Like, it fits in there perfectly. Let me show you. Doo -doo -doo. Just fits in there. And um, so I can have a cross stitch on me on all the time. And I am so super excited about that. And so, really good job. But uh, in my previous purses, I didn't have a designated cross-stitching section. And now this has my bullet journal. It has my wallet. 
It has a cross stitch. I'm so super excited about that. But so, um, now when I'm done with one small project, another small project can go in there. And so I'm going to show you the lineup of kind of small projects. I don't know how many I'm going to get to this month, but I should get to a few. Um, that winter one took about a week, maybe. I don't know. So first up we have that, um, town church. Um, next I would like to finish the none of it Santa for my sister because you might recall I have a goal to finish a Mill Hill a month and let me hide my working copy this is where I'm at so I mean not not even too much more on this one I would also like to potentially do the uh, train, the Mill Hill train that I have for my nephew. Um, I'm not positive if that one's in here. Sorry about this. Okay, apparently for some reason I decided to take it out of here, so I hope I can find it. Oh boy. Oh, I hate when I do things like that, because now I'm not positive where I put it. Anyways, okay, so that is the next small. Potentially, because I didn't do one of these town um, hometown holiday patterns in December, I might try to fit a squeeze... Um, Squeeze in one more to finish. And this is the florist shop. If not, this will be February's. Um, I would like to finish this one because I fell behind. And, I mean, it's nice and small. And then potentially continue working on Tea with Jane. Um, I should, I haven't worked on that since I showed it to you guys last. Um, this isn't a small, but this is one I might try to start. And that is the new Linen and Thread Mystery. Oops, sorry. So, Jan, this is a freebie pattern. You can find it on their website. And so, um, January's was released. That's what it looks like. And... Um, you might recall I got a lot of fabric at the last stitching get together. Someone was giving away some and I, and I got some and I found, um, so I was going through that and I found this piece of 18 count that is the perfect size for this. I, I did the measurements and it gives sufficient, um, border space. I wouldn't have to go order a fabric because it's so long. And this is such, like, it is a narrow but long cut. So, um, I'm, I'm not positive what color this is. But I'm thinking of just stitching it in black. Because I have that whole cone of black. Um, and I was going through my hand dot, or... Yeah, my hand dyed threads, and none of them seem to look right on it. And um, so I might just do black, which is fine. Um, the ultimate cross stitch group, I think, is doing a stitch, um, a daily stitch count. I, you only have to post your starting spot, and then at the end your in spot um, but they give a daily stitch count and I haven't started it yet which means I have quite a bit of catch up to do but I am thinking of possibly doing this project for that or doing my year of whips project for that daily count um, 
So that's still to be determined. And by be determined, I mean I have to decide today, probably. Um, so, yeah. So I'll decide on that. If you guys have any thoughts of a color that might look nice on this besides black, just let me know. It's kind of a, like, light peachy orangey color. I, I don't know how to describe it. Um, but it's really nice, so... Um, the final thing I wanted to share with you is, guys, I want a giveaway, which never happens. I, I'm not lucky like that. I'm just, I'm not. But Elizabeth from Bluebird Stitches, Elizabeth, you have to stop taking down your videos. I love them. Oh, jeez. But Elizabeth was giving away one of these, and I won it. And I, Elizabeth, thank you so much. I, um... I wasn't particularly drawn to the other seasons, but when this one was released, I loved it immediately. And so I'm so looking forward to doing this. I don't have the materials yet, and so it's probably not an it's probably not immediate start. Maybe I'll look to kit it up for um Stitch Mania. I'm already trying to like think about my new starts for Stitch Mania. Um, I've like written down a list of some of them and like pro patterns I have and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this might be one of them. I just, I really love that. And then she had this little cute card and it's from St. Jude's and St. Jude's is, um, probably the charity that I give to the most, um, I just recently had to stop my monthly donations, unfortunately, rent went up like crazy, but as soon as I move into a cheaper place, hopefully, um, I plan on going back to donating monthly to St. Jude's. Um, if you don't know anything about them, they, um, I mean, they do really great things, and they're for children, and, um, the, the parents never receive bills, so the whole cost of everything, of getting treatment from St. Jude's, the parents are never billed. And um, the reason why is that this is such a tough time for the family and uh, everything that they're going through, and um, they just don't feel that it's right to add another stress on top of that. So... I think it's really great that you're giving to this place that's trying to help cure cancer for children. And, um, yeah, I, I love St. Jude's. I mean, I've never been to St. Jude's, but I love the, the idea of what they're doing. And, um, if you have an opportunity to donate to them, I'd really consider it, um, I got signed up probably like two years ago. I was they do a week long radio thon here where I live um, on one of the radio stations for it. And I would be driving home from work, listening to the stories from these children and these parents, and just literally bawling my eyes out. One night I sat in my car after I got home from work. For a good half an hour just listening to the stories and um yeah it's if you have a chance and you or you're looking for some place to give I would really consider St. Jude's so Elizabeth thank you for the pattern thank you also for a card that's from St. Jude's and um I love it I love it and I love your channel and I want you to make more videos okay thanks bye <laughs> one final thing I want to show you is something that I've been working on for crochet um one of my goals crochet wise is to uh, I get these yarn cakes from Germany and it is the one monthly subscription I have not quit yet and probably should but uh, cause I have, I have like 50 okay shh, shh. don't tell my parents um Anyway, so look at this beautiful yarn cake.
Part of the reason why I can't quit is because this woman, okay, she started working out of her house. The first monthly subscription, I was one of three people signed up. And so there's something nice about being the first, but now she's grown so much that she was able to quit her day job and just focus on this aspect, um, this business. And she grew it so much that she's able to now have um, a shop to work out of. And she goes to like craft fairs and Christmas markets and stuff like that in Germany. I mean, her English is fantastic. So she's really friendly. She's really nice. Um, she includes a little candle in every box and a little bit of candy and tea. And it's just, it's great. Her name is um, Little Favorites by Rhea. And she's on Facebook. Um, and uh, so another big person, if you do crochet, that's the only reason why I'm talking about that, this. Um, if you do crochet, you might have seen things like this from a company called um, Waltram. And I've always, I always wanted to try them, but their prices were so expensive. And Rhea's is almost half of what Waltram's is. And she does great color combinations. And so, okay, you're looking at this and you're like, oh, what is that? Okay, so it's basically like thread. And there's a glitter piece in this one. And so as you work, the color changes itself. And so this one starts off with three black threads. And then eventually it'll change into two black threads and one of this color, this one right here. And then it will be one black thread and two of that color and then all three with that color. And the glitter thread goes throughout the whole thing. Then it changes same concept with this lighter one and then it goes back out to this black one and so it creates a lovely effect and um this is used a lot for shawls and i do crochet but i do know that knitters can also use this there's patterns out there for knitters so i am working on this pattern called the bella vita shawl and um if you want to look this up in color, it's even prettier. But that's what it looks like. And this is a free pattern off um, a website, willmade.com, W-I-L-M-A-D-E. If you search free crochet pattern shawls or, or just crochet pattern shawls and look at Google images. This one is right around the first, um, and it, I think it's pinks and creams is what hers is. But so I have this much done. Uh, that still has to be woven in. But so this is where I'm at. And um, yeah, I just want to keep going on that one. Uh, so for my goal for, uh, my goal for the year is I need to finish at least five crochet projects that I've already started. Um, I probably should finish more than five, but considering I have a really bad track record of finishing crochet projects, five seems reasonable. Um, so there's that for this month in particular, I would like to finish 20 rows of a shawl. Not necessarily this one. I have one that I work on during like 10 minute breaks at work. Um, and uh, so it's still at work. Um, but I'd like to finish probably 10 or 20 rows on that. It's getting to be pretty big. Um, so it takes longer to do a row. Um, I just thought that there was something else I wanted to, oh yeah, I want to talk about a few of my other non-stitching goals and stitching goals for the year. Um, so one of my stitching goals for the year is I would like to have between 40 and 50 finishes. Now that seems crazy, I know, because I'm also thinking I'm crazy, but 
Okay, let me just break down a few of the reasons why I think I could achieve that number. One, I want to have 12 mil hill kit finishes, and those are small every month, so we're already we're at 12. Then I want to have 12 of the hometown holiday finishes, and again, those are also really small, so now we're at 24. Then I want to do um, the other three seasons. Those are, again, really small, like a week of just small stitching. Like if I were to concentrate on it, I could probably finish in less than a week. So that brings us to 27. Um, there was something else, wasn't there? Well, class schedule, that's 28. Um, another Prairie School or Santa, that's 29. Um, then there's some of my... Oh, the monthly... Duh, that's why I went to almost 50. Okay, I have nine monthly cottages left to finish. So that's... Um, does that bring us to 38? Yeah, 38. And then I have several of my Year of Whips projects that are so close that I think it should be doable um, to have and to hold. I could finish that pretty quickly. So right there, we're, um, we're almost at 40. And so I think it's doable. Um, I would like to finish 50, but I'm saying between 40 and 50. Another goal that I have for the year is to, um, I put down read 150 books. And by read, I mean listen to audio because uh, then I can cross stitch at the same time. I have not finished a book yet this, this new year. I mean, we're only on like the sixth day, but I should have finished like two or three at this point. I'm in a little bit of a reading slump, but, um... I do like to listen to audiobooks while cross stitching and so yeah. Um this year the past year in 2017 I read 110. So I am looking to increase that number by 40. It's an average of three books a week. Um so we'll see. We'll see. Um some weeks I knock out like seven and then some weeks I don't read at all. So I basically didn't read anything in November and December, which is the only reason why I think that this is potentially doable. If I do read um, 12 or 13 books a month, I should be able to get there. I just can't let myself not read for two months. That's crazy. Again, by read, I mean listen to audiobooks. I don't know the last physical book that I actually read through, which... Um, which kind of sucks, but at the same time, like, cross-stitch is my main, my main hobby, so. Um, I had some other goals, but I don't, I'm not remembering them. I'm trying to cut down on soda, so I'm letting myself have one soda a week. Um, theoretically, it's supposed to be on the weekend, but last, but on Thursday this week, I really wanted a soda. So I had one, which means I'm now punishing myself by not letting myself have soda while on date night tonight. So there is that. What you gonna do? Um, but in the last couple of months, I've lost 10 pounds and um, it's great. I, I was on some kind of a plateau and now I've lost more weight and... Um, yeah, it's all about getting healthier and making better choices. So I'm trying to cut down on sugar, cut down on soda. And I know those are stereotypical New Year's resolutions, but I, I'm a big believer that if you can just change yourself for even 10 days, that that's better than 10 days of junk. So, um, so I want to keep it up. I'm going to try to keep it up. But, you know, even a week is better than nothing. And so, um, so yeah, uh, I encourage you that, you know, if you want to make some resolutions, make some resolutions, stick to them for as long as you can. Um, 
Now I'm just rambling, really, so. <laughs> We're at almost an hour, so I'm going to say goodbye now. Put all this stuff away. Try to figure out what I'm going to do for the rest of today. And um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.